Okay, well, good evening, y'all. I see a number of colleagues of mine from Ventura County. How you guys doing? As well as a lot of folks from outside of California. Just a caveat before we get started that some of the requirements um, that we have to meet um, may only apply to California, may not apply outside the state. I'm not really familiar with some of the things, especially when it comes to departments of justice and some California. of those kind of requirements. Um, I'll try not to subject everybody to death by PowerPoint. I've tried to keep this thing short and to the point. And the way this is going to go is that I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the Ventura County Sheriff's Office of Emergency Services um, and how we uh, interrelate with ACS. And then I've asked Rob to talk about the ACS, you know, how it's organized, capabilities, and things like that. So we've kind of divided it up into half. And again, I'm not going to, it's not going to be a super long um, presentation, but we're going to try to cover all the points that I thought would be interesting to everybody. So a little bit of background about myself. I'm retired from law enforcement uh, in 2009 after 38 years. For the past 12 years, I've been a part-time emergency manager with the Ventura County Sheriff's off of Office of Emergency Services. I do disaster planning and, and things like that. And I'm also the operations section chief when the, our emergency operations centers uh, operational. I hold a general class amateur license and that's me in a nutshell. Um, I'm joined by Rob Hansen, who is the ACS radio officer for Ventura County. Rob's retired from the city of Los Angeles after more than 30 years in the communications and avionics field. He's also the district emergency coordinator for ARES holds an extra class amateur license and has been involved in too many communications related alphabet soup organizations for me to even try to mention here. So with that, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get started. Um, this slide will come up at the end also if you wanna get our email addresses and contact information. Plus, it's going to be in PDF format, and I'm not quite sure how the how your organization. You'll be, you'll be through to me. You'll be okay, through good. Me. Yeah, and then so you can you can point as you can get our contact information easily. A little bit about Vin Ventura County is that we are um, just north of Los Angeles County. We're bordered on the north by Kern County, on the west by Santa Barbara, and on the south and east by Los Angeles County. Population's about 846,000, depending on what day you look it up on the internet. And we have 10 incorporated cities in the county. The Ventura County Sheriff's Office provides law, law enforcement services to five of those 10 uh, incorporated cities. And our fire department, uh, county fire department also provides fire and rescue services for the same five um, incorporated cities. <clears throat> so what kind of hazards do we face in Ventura County? We're probably considerably different than a lot of other um, areas outside of California. We don't have typically the <clears throat> annual regional size disasters or mul even multi-regional size disasters that some of the other states may have like hurricanes and tornadoes and major flooding and, and that kind of stuff. Our big thing in California, or at least in Ventura County, is wildfire. <clears throat> and then, um, of course, the, the winter following the wildfire season, um, debris flows. That, those are our two primary things that we have to deal with. Of course, we could be subject to any of these different kinds of hazards. Um, and it, it could be something completely different that causes a communications failure where we have to rely on our ACS folks uh, for support. So that's just kind of our area in a nutshell. <clears throat> our most significant challenge is since 1994. And the reason I use 1994 is that was the last major earthquake that affected this area. That would have been the um, Northridge earthquake. But in Ventura County, our most significant challenges uh, were the December 2017 Thomas fire, and then the following year, um, the Hill and Woolsey fires. I mean, those were our, <clears throat> those were, for us, were probably 
each once in a lifetime types of disasters that we experience, especially the, uh, the Thomas fire. <clears throat> what are the Ventura County Sheriff Office of Emergency Services responsibilities? Well, basically our um, unit is responsible for setting up and operating the emergency operations center. And I'm not sure if it's this way everywhere, but at least in California, each county is, is also called an operational area. So if, if we have a disaster within the county that affects multiple emergency operations centers or multiple uh, incorporated cities, then our uh, county operational center becomes operational and we, our office actually runs the, uh, the EOC. We coordinate and support all, with all 10 incorporated cities and provide direct support for the unincorporated areas. Each of the incorporated cities has either a full-time or somebody designated in a collateral assignment as an emergency manager that kind of does what we do at the county level for each of the cities. So if a city has some type of emergency or disaster that only impacts that city and their EOC is operational, then we'll operate or we'll open up our EOC to some level in order to support the, uh, the affected city. Um, <clears throat> We support various aspects of emergency response, including we coordinate evacuations. That's probably our biggest function is um, coordinating the evacuations and the alert and warning. Anytime that the County Emergency Operations Center is operational, um, there's an agreement amongst all of the cities within the county that all of the alerts and warnings will be distributed through the uh, County EOC and through Sheriff's OES. So we do all of that. During day-to-day -day operations, each of the cities has the capability of um, doing their own alert and warnings. And we, in Ventura County, we use a system called Everbridge. We, we call it VC alert, but the, the backbone system is through Ever, Everbridge. <clears throat> Mass care and shelter support. In Ventura County, um, the Ventura County Human Service Agency is in charge of sheltering. Um, of course, they get lots of support from Red Cross. And so we support that operation as well. Oops, sorry. Uh, we provide logistical support to cities, county departments, and special districts. For the past two years, our office has almost exclusively uh, been involved in logistic support to the COVID response in helping um, set up evacu uh, set up uh, testing sites and vaccination sites and all of the logistics support that goes along with that which is has been it just, it's been a tremendous amount of effort on a lot of folks part to make this thing come together as well as it has in our county we coordinate mutual aid resources except for fire fire has their own system of mutual aid um, <clears throat> Again, that's if our emergency operation center is operational. Okay, ACS. Now, ACS for the folks that may not, that are outside of California, um, ACS is the equivalent of RACES. Now, I'm not sure what the evolution or the evolution was, but some time ago, uh, State of California Office of Emergency Services renamed RACES to ACS and we followed suit. And maybe Rob can talk a little bit about that when, when we get to him. Uh, what does ACS do? <clears throat> Provide supplemental essential communications during periods of a national, state, or local emergency. Now that's the one thing that may be a little bit different uh, from other jurisdictions and especially from ARIES is that ACS is only operational during the declared disaster. Um, and that's, Primarily because, and again, I don't know if other states have a disaster services worker program, but in California, um, folks that are have been designated as disaster services worker, if they're activated during a declared or proclaimed disaster and they become injured, then they're eligible for uh, state workers' comp benefits. So that's one of the requirements that we have for, for our ACS folks is that they be a, a disaster services worker. 
Uh, they're activated again when there's been a government proclamation or declaration of a state of emergency. And the primary object objectives are provide supplemental communications link between county and city EOCs. And Rob will talk a little bit about that um, in just a minute. And we've got a graphic coming up that'll give you a better idea of how that, uh, how that works. <clears throat> they also provide links to other facilities such as hospitals, shelters, evacuation centers, and a number of other facilities within the county. And, and again, Rob can talk a little bit about that. What's the process to become a, mem a member of uh, ACS? Well, first thing that has to happen is they need to be recruited. Generally, they're recruited from the ranks of um, ARES. They have to complete a Ventura County Sheriff's Office personal history statement. It's kind of an application that has a lot of information about their background and so on and so forth, because they do have to uh, successfully complete a background investigation. Um, our personnel bureau does the background. They get fingerprinted. Uh, fingerprints get run through the system. Um, uh, if they are approved, then they can register as a disaster services worker and be sworn in. Um, this is this is one of the maybe unique requirements that I was talking about earlier that I don't know if this applies in other states or not, but in California, <clears throat> the Department of, Just, Department of Justice requires that any person who goes into a facility where there's a Kletz terminal or any computer capable of accessing Kletz has to receive training and they have to sign an agreement that they understand the policy regarding the misuse of information from Kletz. In other words, if you, if you were somehow able to access one of these terminals and run somebody's license plate to get the information and you gave that out to somebody, um, that's a misdemeanor and you could, act, you could actually be prosecuted. And once all of, all of the things I've already discussed have been completed successfully and um, the supervisor of the unit does a final review and they're approved, then we issue, we the department issues a volunteer ID card. And that's, that's a sample of what it looks like. And that, that's for all of the ACS folks that complete all of those things that I mentioned uh, just a minute ago. One, and there are a select number of folks that in addition to their ID card, they'll, they're issued an electronic access card to the facility that, you know, they've been designated as being responsible for the communications system within that facility. In other words, we have several of our sheriff stations that have ACS um, setups. One of our jails does and it but again rob can talk about that here in just a minute and you can see a little bit better on the graphic that we have and that's kind of it i mean it's not too onerous um it it takes anywhere from best case probably two to three weeks to worst case uh maybe a month or two to complete the process it all depends on how busy sheriff's personnel is with other things that they have to do so because our department has <clears throat> almost a thousand volunteers, not ACS, but volunteers of all types. We have citizen patrols and CERT teams, and DART teams and things like that. So they process a lot of applications. So sometimes it takes a little bit of time to get through the process. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Rob Hansen so he can talk more specifically about ACS and the organization and capabilities, Rob. Okay, thanks, Bill. Uh, I think that's a good introduction. If uh, you want to go through the slides, uh, since you have the okay. control of that, uh, <clears throat> this is this is our county. We do break it into eight areas. Um, they are varying in sizes and population, but uh, geographically, because of our terrain, uh, it's most effective to do that. Um, area five is the Ojai area, and it is very isolated. Uh, by by mountains from the rest of the county. So it's a difficult area. It's a small area, but uh, 
it's important to to have that area as a tactical unit. And uh, you know, we have uh, some areas that are limited because of the size of the population. The area two in Thousand Oaks is, I think, our most populous area. Certainly, the most volunteers. Um, and in our whole county, actually, is is very mountainous, and uh, it it is a challenge for communication. So we have uh, a couple of repeater groups that are very good and help us out a lot. Um, up around the area where it says Area Eight is uh, the mountain ridge where we have uh, a number of repeaters and uh, on on a, a bunch of bands, and uh, each each uh, area has their own repeater that uh, we do check-ins with. And then on Tuesday evenings, we, after the uh, area check-ins, we have a, a county check-in where the leaders from each of the eight areas check in and, and report their status and information. So we do that weekly. Um, and I think you can go to the next slide and it'll show, uh, um, yeah, these are our support, supported facilities, most of them. Uh, a couple were left off because it just gets too many lines, but uh, the red dot is the emergency operations center where Bill works. And uh, we go out quite a ways um, to, to cover various areas. Um, in, in each of those uh, areas, we have uh, voice, we have packet. Um, some of them have mesh. Uh, we do use quite a bit of the Arden mesh systems. We have uh, 75 active mesh stations in the county. Uh, we're still building, you know, it's one of those catch 22s where you have to have enough people to uh, make it work. And uh, uh, until there is, there isn't enough interest to make it work. So we're still building, but 75 is a good number for a fairly small county. And uh, that ties in also to the uh, packet system and, uh, and Winlink. We'll talk about Winlink in a minute. Uh, we do have a trailer. Um, it's a really nice facility to work from. Uh, we have uh, all the VHF bands, uh, UHF, HF, and uh, to the left of the rack there is uh, a packet setup that's on 24 seven solar powered and uh, just keeps, keeps running. Um, the mast on the front of the trailer is an air mast, 50 feet, uh, push a button, it goes up 50 feet. It's a great asset, makes deploying uh, very simple. Uh, the antennas just sit on top of the mast head and uh, you push the button and the air compressor runs and it goes up. It's, uh, it's a wonderful asset. We do have a number of go boxes. Um, one of them is shown below, it's our HF box. Uh, but we have a number of VHF, uh, UHF boxes that also do uh, packet so we can uh, uh, communicate and we'll, we'll drag those out to, a, to an evacuation center or a facility, you know, should the facility be uh, red tagged and we can't go in, we can set up in the parking lot and uh, operate from outside. So, uh, you know, we, we're fairly flexible in that way. We do have generators. You can probably see one of the Hondas in the back of the interior uh, of the trailer. And uh, we use the trailer also at events. So uh, we take it out to uh, marathons and those kind of things because it's a really nice uh, facility to work from. Uh, what's the next slide? Um, so, okay, yeah, we do have uh, Winlink. We use quite a bit of Winlink lately. We're uh, growing with that. We do weekly check-ins um, to our, our uh, server. We have a local uh, server that records messages and saves them. Uh, we also do the DYFI uh, earthquake uh, check-ins and we, we encourage people to do that each week. Um, and we have a number of uh, uh, RMS stations around the county. We have uh, one HF station, uh, a number of VHF, UHF, and uh, some are on packet and some are on VARA. Um, one of our stations is uh, using uh, uh, Starlink as the, as the internet access. So even if all of the internet goes down, uh, it is still functional and uh, it's working out really well. Uh, 
we're hoping that the Starlink system will grow and uh, we'll see more and more uh, use of that because it's impervious to uh, you know local troubles. So it's a it's a good good setup for us. Uh, our packet stations, uh, all of the dots you saw on that previous map uh, have packet stations and we have others in addition and none of that counts our people's personal stations. Uh, there's probably a, a few dozen uh, home stations that operate and check in. And again, the mesh uh, uh, does tie in to the, the packet and the WinLink and you can do WinLink check-ins at very high speed um, with that. And we do, uh, uh, voice chats, and uh, we have a phone system that you can actually dial up uh, another station using a VoIP phone, and uh, that works really well. So it's a it's a growing system. It's um, relatively inexpensive. Uh, mesh is pretty cheap. So if you the the challenge, of course, is you need line of sight, and in our terrain uh, that can be tough. So that's why we keep the packet because no matter what. It's going to work. It may be slow, but it works. Uh, let's see what's next. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, uh, our roster, we have about 180 people uh, on the current roster. Uh, we do require participation from each member. We don't want people to sign up and uh, you know, if they're ACS, get a card, or even if they're ARES on our roster, uh, we if we're going to keep them there, we want them to participate. We do have some minimums for for checking in, and um, and participating in events. In the last year and a half, we haven't had many events, so uh, you know we're a little loose on that. But but they're coming back now, so that's good. Uh, we did do a lot of hours uh, in in the last year, uh, six, over six thousand hours. Um, and that includes check-in times and events and uh, uh, working on equipment, uh, not your own equipment, but uh, uh, system equipment. And uh, we do have a great system now for logging hours uh, developed by one of our uh, members, Stu Sheldon. And it's a portal for, for logging information and it's, it's uh, working out really well. So we're hoping that's growing. It's, it's Brand new, I would say less than two months old. So uh, we're we're doing that. Uh, to stay proficient, we do exercise. We have training. We have uh, NBI N, uh, N beams practice uh, once a month uh, through a repeater. We actually do it through our countywide repeater. Uh, we do voice check-ins, uh, and that's one of our main requirements. We want people to check in each week or. Uh, as often as they can, but uh, we do want them to check in. It tells us that they have a radio that works, they know how to use it, and they're in the area. Um, you know, we don't want uh, email check-ins or anything else because you can do that from anywhere. So we want to assure that our members can actually hit the repeaters and talk and uh, have functional equipment. Uh, the WinLink, um, we have, like I said, a number of uh, RMS stations and uh, uh, that's one of the things that our uh, areas we serve really like. They, uh, they like WinLink and uh, like the ability that we can send an email to someone outside of the area in an emergency. Uh, for instance, a hospital that needs equipment or supplies. Uh, so uh, we do work on that a lot and uh, we try and keep people proficient in that. Um, next, what do we got? Yeah, we do the DYFI uh, coast um, geologic survey drills. Uh, they have uh, on their website, they, they encourage people to leave messages. There's also a method to do it through WinLink. And uh, we, we do that because our probably our biggest threat for major emergencies is a, uh, a big earthquake. Uh, it may not hit Ventura County, but it will you know, hit Southern California at some point, and uh, it's it's a useful tool. Uh, USGS really likes to have reports. Sometimes we, uh, you know, if there's a small quake, we'll we'll do the reports and actually report on actual events. So uh, maybe no damage, but it's a good practice. Um, we did have in-person meetings every other month. 
Uh, we haven't done that since the COVID thing. We've been doing them on Zoom, kind of like this. Um, and the months we don't have uh, meetings, we have an operational readiness test where all of the EOCs are activated and we ensure that we can talk to each other and that uh, someone in that uh, facility hasn't decided that uh, they had better use for that, uh, that part of the, the building. Uh, it does happen occasionally and uh, we get in there and make sure. Um, let's see, we got other activities that we participate in, marathons, uh, air shows, parades, and field day. Field day, we don't actually do a, a, um, an ACS field day. Uh, our clubs though, in the area, we have uh, some very active clubs. And I would say most of the members of those clubs are ACS members or ARAS members and participate. Um, <clears throat> one of our clubs, uh, was uh, 14 Alpha this past time. Uh, I think there was only one station with more. And uh, it's fun to get out there and, and uh, activate a, a large uh, event like that. And uh, you know, maybe, maybe not as many points because we put um, less qualified people on the air and get them active and we enjoy doing that. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, we do have uh, this weekend, uh, we're supporting a parade and uh, a marathon. So uh, two, two things on the same weekend, as well as some mountaintop antenna work. Uh, we have an air show in the summer that we participate in. Uh, we are the ground safety crew and uh, we patrol the areas. We, we give an APR, APRS a little tracker to each of the teams. And so we know where they are on the airfield. And when uh, a call comes in, we can find them. And we do use APRS quite a bit in, in our events and it, we found it's uh, very effective. Uh, next screen. Oh, okay. Uh, we, I probably missed a bunch of things. Um, let's see. Let's see if I have anything on my notes. Uh, no, I think that's pretty good. Uh, we did participate last uh, week a bit with uh, the Skywarn Recognition Day. Um, we weren't allowed to go into the U.S. Uh, the uh, National Weather Service office, but we did some remote remote support. Um, and the Oxnard office in Ventura County actually supports uh, the Los Angeles area. So it's a it's an interesting thing that uh, most people don't pay attention to. But. I think that's it. Uh, if there's questions or we'll give it back to Bill and uh, see see where we go. Okay, thanks, Rob. Just a final thought for me. Um, ACS in Ventura County, they really truly are the unsung heroes. They're the folks that, I mean, we on the Sheriff's Department side go about our daily business. You know, we get lost in the minutia of what we're doing and we forget that these folks are out there and at a, you know, at the drop of a hat, the, they're available to come and support us, even though um, we're, at least for the past two years, we really haven't been able to do the kinds of things we would like to do to support them. But again, they really, they're, they're the unsung heroes and they deserve a lot more credit than they, a lot more public credit than they get. And we're going to try to work on that in the, you know, in the upcoming year. Rob and I have talked about some ideas to, to try to, uh, take care of that and we're going to be working on it so that's all i have uh one one thing i didn't mention uh that i probably should is the our relationship with ares and acs um it's kind of unique here in uh, ventura county in that essentially it's the same group in in many other areas it's two separate teams that um you know have similar goals, but don't work together. And I would say most of what we do is done under the ARES uh, umbrella, uh, because we're, unless we're activated or called on by the Sheriff's Department. So we can do uh, many of the things. And uh, you know, if, if a disaster is declared or the sheriffs decide they need us for something, we can then sort of put on our ACS hats and it's the same people, we know each other, we know how they work together. And, uh, 
you know, we, we can do that effectively. And I think that's a, a huge advantage here in Ventura County. Uh, so uh, there were some questions on the uh, chat. I don't know if uh, the moderator wants to uh, go through that or. Okay, oh, well, it's up to you, however you well, want to do it. Okay, if you lower your screen, you can see both sides there. Okay, uh, Larry, go ahead and take it from from uh, um, from the raised hand. Okay, thank you. Uh, and thanks for the presentation. I was stationed at Port Wayne during Vietnam. So uh, I'm familiar with the uh, terrain of the areas. Uh, have you experienced in the HF world with doing NVIS for the communications around the county in that area? We do. Uh, we On our weekly Tuesday evening nets, uh, we do uh, an 80 meter uh, NVIS uh, check-in. It's We, we do uh, at... Uh, 18:30 we do uh, NVIS uh, HF check-in. At 18:45 we do a 16 or six uh, six meter check-in uh, through a repeater, uh, local six meter repeater. And then at uh, 1900 hours is our area nets where each area does their check-ins. And then 1930 is our countywide net. So we do uh, an NVIS test every week. Uh, we were doing it on 40 meters. We've tried other bands, but uh, you know, for for many of us with smaller lots, uh, doing 80 meters, 75 meters is difficult. But uh, uh, <laughs> you know, we're getting there. And the the beauty is, you don't have to have the antenna up high to do it. Uh, my also, antenna is quite low to the ground. Also, um, this is what I don't understand here. But uh, I'm a member of Skywarn. I'm surprised they don't have. Uh, uh, ham radio, more ham radio communications with, via repeaters or something, because the only way I know how to get hold of the Oxnard people is through a uh, landline. We do, and, we do have a full uh, uh, ham station at the at the Oxnard office. Uh, we have HF, uh, VHF, two twenty, and UHF uh, there. Um, but my understanding is the only uh, employee that was a ham has since retired. So we need to figure out how we're going to uh, keep that going. But uh, yeah, we do have, we do have a station there. Um, and during our uh, Southwest ACS uh, regional check-ins, uh, they do check-in. Uh, we send someone over there to, uh, to do the check-in. Um, and they do have shares. Someone asked about shares. We aren't using shares in Ventura County right now, except the Weather Service has, has a shares license. And we may get there. Oh, that's all I got. Thank you. OK. All right. Uh, would you, you want to read them off the chat, or would you uh, rather uh, Barry did, either way? Well, why don't you go ahead and we'll uh, see if we can answer. Okay, Barry. Okay. Uh, Steve has a lot of questions. Steve, do you want to come on and ask your questions directly? I mean, easier. Uh, I have to go back and look, look at them. Which Steve? <laughs> okay. uh, Which one Steve? Question. Oh, we got two Steves. Steve from Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, my name's Steve Waterman, K4CJX. Good evening. Uh, do you use. Uh, the uh, Winlink RMS relay as a server for your Arden mesh. Uh, we do in in uh, one of our locations that is tied to the mesh and uh, on a mountaintop. I, I believe he is using RMS relay, and we have another. Um, uh, Orv, are you on here? I didn't look. Chime in if you're here. We have uh, our mesh master, if you will. Uh, I, I didn't hear him. So uh, we do have one that uses, uh, you know, HF and mesh and, and VHF all together. And, uh, and he is using relay. I have a VARA uh, RMS that is just RMS packet. So um, I, I don't tie it to anything else. It's a simple standalone uh, system that's gonna hopefully keep working in an emergency. Okay, uh, the other question I had was, uh, is your ACS group in any way tied into uh, Cal OES CRU? 
yeah, we do check in on the HF nets and, uh, you know, every week. And uh, once a month, there's a Southwest ACS check-in through various link repeaters. Um, yes, yeah, California has redesignated their ACS group to uh, communications reserve unit. Uh, I don't know why the name changed, but I, I suspect that maybe uh, ACS was uh, copywritten or something. But uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's the CPU same. CPU is uh, written in California, uh, code annotated, uh, according to John Hudson. Right. And that is the original acronym. Hmm. Uh, okay. So that's, uh, I just didn't, but it, you know, labels don't matter. I just wondered. If you no, are, yeah, they're uh, all connected. similar and we all talk. So okay, that's good. the important part. Great. Um, the ACS group kind of grew out of uh, the city of Los Angeles. Uh, uh, and uh, before that, the county of Los Angeles has a group called Disaster Communications Service. And, uh, you know, it was it was somewhat a model for for the Los Angeles city group. And Isn't that uh, the L.A. County Sheriff's Office. Right. County Sheriff's. Uh, the L.A. City unit is run by the fire department, L.A. City Fire. Um, so, you know, various agencies control the groups and. Uh, it's it's hopefully very similar and we can all work together and we all uh you know work through uh, the incident command system and we do require i didn't mention that but we do require a number of uh, ics courses for for our members and uh you know the the goal is to be able to communicate do you have a task book uh, we we have a we have a book yeah um, we use the Aries book and we use uh, one that uh, was developed and it's in uh, in the process of revision I guess that's a constant but um, yeah we 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 do okay uh, can you describe what NBeams practice consists of well the NBeams is a is a function of uh, FL Digi. And uh, it's, uh, it's just a messaging system that uh, we picked up originally because it works so easily uh, that we've been able to get just about anybody to use it. Um, some of our stations uh, that are, that are uh, in, in, we'll say, less technical areas, um, you can use a laptop and a handheld and no interface cable and uh, just the speaker and microphone and the laptop and manually key the radio when you need to transmit and, or just you know have it have it uh, the microphone active on the laptop and it will will effectively send messages and uh, having the ability to do it without interface cables and you know uh, a radio that has a port and all of that uh, it's very effective so uh, uh, Rick, Rick Tate, are you on here? No, don't hear him. Okay. Uh, he, he runs our, uh, monthly tests. So I thought maybe he could. He's on right now. He just unmuted. I am on. Yeah. Oh, okay. You want, anything you want to say about it, Rick? Oh, um, <clears throat> well, uh, we find it, uh, very useful to, uh, uh, practice once a month at least um, almost every time we have somebody that uh, has some difficulties and and then we uh, uh, have to you know work with them offline but uh, uh, it it is a nice system uh, the fact that uh, it has various uh, ICS forms already built in and uh, that it doesn't send the <clears throat> format of the forms it just sends the contents of the uh of the fields means that it's it's relatively fast and uh, we use the mt63 2k uh, mode which takes up the whole audio bandwidth but it's extremely rugged and reliable and it works even if there's noise in the room, if you're doing it, as Rob said, with uh, just microphone and speaker. Um, 
and uh, we've had demonstrations where somebody at the front of a, of a room full of people doing a presentation uh, sends a message just through the air to someone at the other end of the room and it all comes through just fine. And uh, if it's a ICS form, the data just populates the form at the other end. And it's all set that uh, if it's like a, a 213 that um, um, often uh, requests a reply, why the person doing the reply just types it in and and hit send and and it goes back and uh, it's uh, it's really good good mode. Um, we encourage it. That's okay. it. And Tom from Washington wants to know if you've tried sixty meters. We haven't. Um, we yeah, we probably should, but uh, we we really haven't. Uh, we've done some things with it, but we don't we don't regularly use it. Okay. Uh, there may be some advantage in that um, uh, with our NVIS uh, testing, but right now, uh, you know, we're we're uh, trying to keep up with the the various modes and bands we're we're using. So. Um, not everybody has an antenna that will work on that band, and that's one of the challenges. Uh, um, you know, a lot of people have uh, 40 and 80 antennas, and 60 uh, doesn't always load in, into those. But yeah, it, it, we probably will at some point. Okay, that's all the questions in the chat, Dan. I think someone had a hand up. You're muted. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, Peter, go ahead. Uh, thank you. I uh, just wanted to follow up on your discussion of FL Digi. How does how do you um, when you're also using WinLink and then you start to try to train people on FL Digi? Don't you find that there's some confusion? Some you know, I've already learned that one. Why should I learn this one? Kind of uh, situation going on. They're, they're a little different. One of the beauties, I, I would say, of uh, FL Digi is it's one to many. So we can send a, a, a bulletin out that will go to everybody that's on, uh, where WinLink is a, generally a one to one. Uh, so you can send a message to an individual and you can use the chat or you know, use, use a direct message, but it's not really designed, unless I'm missing something, to go to a bunch of people. So we use our countywide repeater for the FL Digi thing. And uh, we can send out a message that everyone that is monitoring will receive. And either they can reply, you know, with a message or take an action if we've asked them to take an action. Sometimes you might say, send an email to this person or, you know, whatever. Um, and the one to many is, I think, a big advantage of what we do. And, and it's one of the reasons that uh, we've been useful in things like marathons. You know, at the marathons, they have cell phones and they can call each other and they can call an aid station and they can do this and that. But what if the race needs to be stopped and all stations need to be notified? Uh, you can't do that with cell phones effectively. So our messages on voice and, and our end beams and some of that go to everyone at once and the message is delivered. So I, I think that's the big advantage along with the fact that, that you don't need any interface. You know, uh, a Baofeng radio and a, and a cheap laptop will, will get you on the air with it. Thanks, that's really helpful. Sure. Uh, we did, you know, I. It was on the slide. Uh, if you'd like to visit our website, uh, you can probably learn some more. It's vccom, Victor, Charlie, Charlie, Oscar, Mike, Mike, dot org. And uh, two C's, two M's. Uh, if you don't get that, it won't go through. And, uh, you know, we're, we're developing. We've got things there. We do have a group IO that we use for, for uh, messaging. Uh, we also have, uh, as, as Bill mentioned, the Everbridge system. Uh, we have a, our own little portal on that where we can alert people, activate people, um, 
I've got a, a, a system set up that alerts everyone uh, 10 minutes before our weekly net. So uh, people tend to remember it because they get a text message. And uh, so, you know, we've got a number of different ways we, we communicate and we try and use them all. I like that. Okay, are there any more? Uh, I only see more hands up. Barry, how does the questions look? We're good with questions. This has been a great presentation, guys. Appreciate you coming on and doing this. Sure. This uh, pleasure. This group is great. You know, there's a lot of good information. I usually uh, I like to watch the recordings because uh, this time of day for me is usually busy. But uh, um, it's it's both the Wednesday and Thursday are are excellent uh, setups for training people, and we need we need a lot of that. We we do try and announce and promote them. Appreciate that. Yeah, we do get a lot more people watching the videos. Earlier on, we had uh, one, two, sometimes 300 people on board. And now I'm seeing it go down. But we're seeing that a lot of people are, are watching the video. So the same people are out there. They're just not sitting here at this specific time. Right. OK, is there any more questions? I saw the, someone in the chat there, Barry. Uh, it just comments of some, some different things. OK, cool. Cool. Well, um, anybody got any comments? I'll go. I'm gonna uh, play it out here just a few more moments to make sure we're not missing anybody. We're not. Kathy, do you have your hand up or are you just? Yeah, I just wanted to mention an additional training that I have done during the lockdown was the Red Cross. They have a practice on Thursdays. They're gonna be starting up again, January 22nd. And they've been doing practice uh, with WinLink. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, called the ETO uh, WinLink Thursdays. And it's just a different way of practicing on WinLink, sending forms, et cetera. They send out instructions and I can put the uh, contact in the chat if you'd like. Yes, and why don't you do that, Kathy? Put that, also they have a groups IO. If you have that, you might uh, put that in there so people might want to join that. If I uh, may, something, may say something uh, also, uh, Rob, uh and everyone uh this is ari wa 6 i in newbury park and uh i don't know if it was mentioned uh we have every monday we have a net uh interrupt between different counties over here and we share information we share uh events and uh between counties so that's that's another beneficial uh to the area if uh, one area is affected the other area can help and and lead resources so that's that's another thing um well okay. i you're absolutely right we we need to be able when you have a place that's affected by the disaster usually the people that will respond to those disasters are affected if they're in that area that they are affected also so you need your neighbors and you need to have uh, cooperation and understanding between all the neighbors who can help each other, whether it be the city over, the county over, the state over, whatever. You need that kind of cooperation and understanding and on, everybody on the same page. It really helps. Um, okay. I do not see any more questions. Do you, Barry? No, nope, we're good. All right. With that in mind, um, if you'll send me that uh, the PDF, I'll get that out there and get this out there on the on the uh, where people can watch it again and again and again. And well, I wish everybody a, a wonderful seventy threes. I hope everybody has a, a good weekend ahead. And I'll be seeing you Wednesday or Thursday or both days. Thank Anybody you, guys. Last? Great, great presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. I might comment, Steve. Uh, he came on board our planning committee here maybe two, three months ago, whatever it was, um, I called him to be a, uh, to what I had some ideas, what I wanted to do with the airy side, our Thursday side. We've seen some of that, a recent series uh, of what the benefits of amateur radio is to the agencies. And we've now grown that out even more. So I'm hoping you'll see even more of that kind of stuff coming down the line very soon. Uh, our Thursday, well, both of our, our presentation days are very important to us. Uh, Thursday is where we get most of the uh, people turning out, and um, we need to, to keep growing that out to, to take care of your needs and interests. If you have specific need or specific interest or just a simple request, let us know, please. Uh, we value that kind of input, and uh, we follow up on it. 
with all that, I'm going to say 73s. After I close down this uh, this meeting, you can come right back in again. And the first person that comes in assumes the role of the host. And then everybody gets to come in and just enjoy yourselves uh, like any meeting and chat and, and uh, uh, get to know each other. So with that, I'm going to say 73s and close her down. 73s, everybody.